Me, me, fingerprint smudges. Don't you ever clean your tablet? No, you finger, you can see it dirty. Yeah. There was a time where the idea of a mobile productivity slate was one of the most sought after desirable products a company could aspire to build. Today, tablets are in an interesting position, stuck somewhere between large phones, Chromebooks, and multi-mode PCs. There's a wider spectrum of solutions at various screen sizes. So let's say we're in the market for a larger display at a modest price a companion product, or a family screen. Huawei's solution for that demographic is here. This is the MediaPad M5 Lite, a budget-friendly slate with some handy productivity features wrapped in a pleasing visual aesthetic. Starting off with design, consumers are in for a treat. Budget-friendly hardware should not come in a wrapper that punishes you for spending less. And this is one of the primary victories of the MediaPad. It totally blends in with more premium hardware. It'll look slick if you pull it out of a nice bag. I do have some hardware issues with the overall configuration and layout though. That's a bit more on Google and Android than it is on Huawei. The 10 inch slate is well tread territory, but I still don't think Google knows quite what to do with it. You know, navigation controls at the bottom of your screen, which makes sense on a phone, don't work as well when you enlarge that screen size. And Huawei offers the choice of using the fingerprint scanner to navigate, but I personally would have preferred the orientation rotated. You know, fingerprint on the shorter side of the tablet because it feels clumsy to always one hand the device when you're in landscape mode. That said, Huawei's reputation for fingerprint biometric security is second to none. And even on lower cost hardware, it works fantastically well. I still greatly prefer fingerprints to face unlock, especially on a larger slate, which will more often be flat or at an odd angle from the user's face. No complaints on the LCD, a big bright HD screen with practical bezels running around the sides. I'm not actually a fan of bezel-less design on gadgets, especially larger screens where you need to differentiate more between holding and interacting. For example, even with some healthy dead space around the display, training a thumbprint while holding the tablet in portrait mode was more than a little bit tricky. That also goes hand in hand with one of the more unique features of the MediaPad, including a pressure sensitive stylus in the box. And that helps broaden the potential of the product, handwriting notes, a basic level of art or design work, and I love fine point control for shoot 'em up games, but it's also useful for document editing, filling in for a mouse, that fine point control. And it's in the box, included in the price, which is a really nice perk. It's a Huawei product, which means custom software. Running on top of Oreo, I'm a fan of EMUI optimizations, the under the hood performance management, garbage collection. I've had positive experiences with Huawei products running smoother than competing gadgets over time. That comes with the counterbalance of a visual aesthetic that might not land for everyone. I think the look is a bit clumsy and some changes like in the settings menu can feel changed just for the sake of changing something. It wasn't too bad, but a couple bloatware apps to remove. I wiped out Facebook and Messenger, Booking.com, but I do use Office apps, so I left the Microsoft services intact. One area where I feel Google still has room to evolve, better family and kid management options. This may be a little less critical on a parent's phone, but a tablet might become a family community product. Kids Corner automatically links a fingerprint to a kid's account, simplifying the UI and delivering some great parental controls, blue light filtering, session time, and break time. You set what apps they have access to, and the tablet will use the proximity sensor to tell kids if they're holding it too close to their face. It's easy to set up, and that fingerprint link is great. It seamlessly identifies who is using the tablet. This is a high watermark, for this kind of family management, I want this on all of my computing platforms. This combo of hardware and software, I was pleasantly surprised by the performance. Mid-ranger specs, we should expect a few momentary stutters, some lag, but on the whole, in-app performance is fine for most applications. I wrote this script in Word on the tablet. It's plenty powerful for streaming video, and while this isn't beast hardware, you can do some gaming on it. This tablet is more Monument Valley speed than high resolution hack and slash action, but dialing back some graphic settings, you should be fine. That multimedia edge is well supported for audio. A quartet of speakers produce a full sound no matter the orientation. And a headphone jack is always appreciated, especially in a budget-friendly product. 
For something called the media pad, this works for me. The flip side of budget friendly, there are cameras on the media pad, but I don't think any of us expected them to be great. Huawei adorably includes a pretty comprehensive camera app, lots of settings, lots of controls, full manual controls, but it's the hardware. The software had great options, but this hardware is, well, budget friendly. Solid network performance, maybe only pulling about half what my max download speed is over Wi-Fi, but this won't have any issues with streaming content and the range is pretty decent. Where this kit really impresses again is with battery life. A large capacity is kind of a requirement for a product which will be passed around the living room. If you're like me, you're the one in the family who plugs gadgets back in because they're never charged when you need to use them. Thankfully, Huawei's fast charging helps. Only three hours to fully charge this from completely empty and shorter stints plugged in should deliver plenty of runtime. So that's enough rambling from me. Let's wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the Huawei MediaPad M5 Lite? It's good. It completely succeeds at what the manufacturer sets out to do. It has some fun features and perks at a totally affordable price. In this market for a companion device, Price to performance matters a lot, so it's nice finding options that don't break the bank and also don't punish the consumer for being less expensive. I compare it against something like an A-series Galaxy Tab and Huawei scores an easy victory IMO. The consideration, tablets. Tablets continue to suffer a jack of all trades, master of none issue. This is a solution, a very good solution but a solution to what? One of the things I keep coming back to on tablets, just being sort of all-rounder, jack-of-all-trades devices though, I'd much rather throw a couple dollars at something like this with decent speakers, good performance, and the ability to do a whole bunch of things, and also invest in like a little tablet stand than going for any of these dedicated smart speakers with a screen. I mean, if you need a kitchen computer, tablets are a solution in search of a problem and that's what makes reviewing them so difficult. You find things to do with it when you get one. It's incredibly difficult as a reviewer to anticipate what you might do with it. I was perfectly able to write and surf and watch and social media and game a little. Just a lot of products can do that. So even though this is a budget-friendly solution for an Android slate, it still might represent a luxury purchase for many people as they consider their family budget and entertainment dollars. If you are in the market for a slate, I like what the MediaPad has to offer. I'll of course have links down below this video where you can find more info on the Huawei MediaPad M5 Lite. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing, not just geeking out on fun gadgets. There are more conversations we need to have about getting the most out of our electronics purchases. If you would like to help support production on this channel, please head on over to somegadgetguy.com where you'll find a support banner with all of my current affiliates and partnerships, including my Patreon campaign, where you can contribute directly and get access to my exclusive patron-only content. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters, the Instagrams, and the Facebooks, and I will catch you all on the next review.